Thanks for joining us for today's message. We are currently in a 10-week campaign entitled Daring Faith, where we are dedicated to growing everybody's faith, both individually and corporately as a body of Christ. And we'd love to connect with you and learn if this ministry has been a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can send us an email to info at hftwchurch.org. If you'd like to be a blessing to this ministry, you may do so by visiting hftwchurch.org forward slash give. We pray that this message would be a blessing to you and that it would inspire you to live in the daring faith that Jesus has for you. How are you guys doing? You, do, you guys doing good? All righty. Well, today we're going to be talking about, you know, we've been talking about daring faith these past few weeks, and today is not the exception. We're going to be talking about faith, and we're going to talk about planting in faith or daring to plant in faith. Planting and sowing is part of our lives, okay? Uh, you might be asking, well, what, a, what, a, what does planting or farming have to do with, with the Christian life? Well, it has to do more with it than what you think it does. But today we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about how to plant in faith. In Genesis 8.22, it says, As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest. <clears throat> throughout the whole scripture, throughout the whole Bible, seeds are referred to in so many ways. Jesus himself is referred to as a seed in a symbolic way. And from that seed, you and I exist. You and I have eternal life. Now, interestingly, also, faith is referred to or compared to a seed. The Bible says that if we have faith like a seed of mustard, we can move mountains. These past weeks, as I said, we've been talking about daring faith. And we've been talking about how to allow this faith to open up a flow from God that will uh, produce miracles, that will give us breakthroughs. And one of the ways we can use our faith is by planting seeds. And we do this every single day of our lives. We maybe not realize it, but we do. We plant every day. You know, when my wife and I first came to this church, uh, Hunter, he was, he was a youth pastor back then. Uh, he invited us to a, a, a little youth conference. I think there were, or it was a, I don't know if it was a retreat. But they, they invited us, and, and he, he invited me to give the word. And um, we stayed for a Sunday morning. We were looking for a church back then. And uh, we lived in El Paso. And we came, and when we came in, we knew immediately that this church was different. Just by seeing that big wall with that big map, world map, and the, 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 that catchphrase that it says, right? A neighborhood church on a worldwide mission. We knew this church was different. It was a church that knew how to plant in the lives of others. It was not a barn with a lot of grain, a lot of seeds stored up, doing nothing much? No. It was a church that planted seeds. In our first year or so, a little bit more, that we were here, very important seeds were planted around the world. The cones were sent to Africa. The terrazas were sent here to El Paso. The Howards and a bunch of kids were sent to Atlanta. And these were, these were not just members of the church. They were part of the staff. They were core people that, that produced for this church, and they were sent out. I recognized, or we recognized, that this church was not afraid to plant seeds. Its very nature is a daring, crazy faith. Most churches don't even let their members go to another, to another church. <laughs> and this church sent 
core people out to the world to reproduce. And because I, I know the nature of this church and coming from the outside in, and, I, and, and I've seen the culture of this church, uh, I can freely talk to you about this, about these points. And what I, what I want to talk about is the laws of planting and harvesting. The laws of planting and harvesting. Planting and sowing has been around since the beginning. Since the very beginning. It is a law that God established. What you sow, that's what you will reap. Now, this law not only applies to the physical world, where you plant corn and you get corn, right? But it also applies to our spiritual living. If we, as individuals and as a church, as a church ignore these laws, we can be hurt. There could be re repercussions. Reper you understood me, right? Thank you. It's going to hurt us. But if we wisely use the laws of planting and sowing in our lives, we will be blessed beyond what we can imagine or measure. The laws of sowing and reaping can be used in all areas of our lives, in our relationships, in our families, in our health, in our finances, in our careers, in ministry, and most importantly, in our relationship with God. What we sow is what we will reap. Now, what we need to understand here is that that what of what we need is what we need to sow. If a farmer needs corn, what is he going to do? He's going to plant corn, right? So if you need love, you need to sow love. If you need patience, <laughs> you need to sow patience. Yes? If you need talent, you need to give that talent that you have right now. What you plant will be reproduced in yourself. Now, having said that, let's get into these laws that we need to be aware of to have a successful harvest in our lives and also in our church. Number one. Number one, the first law is that everything, everything, everything <laughs> starts with a seed. Everything starts with a seed. Everything that you see started with a seed. Even if it was an idea, even if it was a dream, a vision, that in itself was a seed. You and I started out as a seed that joined our mommy's egg. Nine months later, we started out as a seed. This church started out out of a seed, a thought, a voice, a calling that fell upon our pasture. Not, not only that, a bunch of other seeds joined him. And out of that, we enjoy what we have today. Just look at this. It all started with a seed. Now, the key to everything uh, re reproducing the way it has or the way it will is the key is faith. Faith. A farmer plants his seeds in faith. Knowing that eventually he will have what he planted. But the wonderful thing about a seed is that it multiplies itself. It just doesn't just stay in one. It multiplies itself. There's that famous saying that goes, and a man can know how many seeds are in an apple. But only God knows how many apples are in a seed, right? A seed multiplies itself. The question then remains, what am I planting that is, go, that is going to so abundantly reproduce? What am I planting? 
Did you know that every action, every word, every attitude, every offering is a seed? It's a seed. What is it that I am planting? Are my words encouraging? Are my words loving? Are they kind? Are my actions of giving, of caring for others, is my offering more than just money in a bucket? What am I planting? Each and every seed you and I plant or give is of value. In most cases, it's of eternal value. Every seed we plant. When we understand that, we will give and we will plant with a different perspective. Even in the way that you speak to your wife or the way you speak to your husband will determine how they speak back to you. The way you treat your kids will determine their attitude towards you. The way you bless your heavenly father (laughs) in great ways determines the blessings you receive from above. What you plant is what you receive and everything starts, everything begins with a seed. The seed that you plant as an individual blesses in in a great way your own life, your your job, your career, your, your family. But when as a church, We plant seeds throughout the world. It blesses the kingdom of God in a way that you may not even imagine. This past month in March, uh, my wife and I led a group of 18 people to uh, Guatavampo, Sonora. We we just say Sonora, Mexico, so you you guys won't get confused. But it's Guatavampo, Sonora. And man, was it a blessing. We were able to plant seeds out of your generosity, out of your seeds. More than 400 children were blessed by hearing the gospel and receiving big bags of treats. More than 60 families were blessed with huge food baskets. We had a concert at the town square there at at the plaza. And I mean, people were blessed. Many lives were given to Christ. In Zambia, More than 450 kids were also ministered to on Easter Sunday. In Juarez, in Anapra, more than 300 kids and their families were blessed greatly on Christmas. Here locally, we planted 1,000 seeds as invitations. And we had a record-breaking attendance of 1,450 people coming to church on Sunday. 1,450 people. We had 15 baptisms. And some of them were whole families that got baptized together. Your seed is of great importance and value to this church. Each and every little cent that you give, each and every prayer that you pray, each minute you give in service to the church, has repercussions in the advancement of the kingdom of God. Your seed is of value. Everything starts with that. Everything starts with one seed. This takes me to to my second point, or second law of planting and harvesting, which is nothing happens until you plant the seed. Nothing happens until you plant the seed. If you don't plant it, no hay nada. You ain't getting nothing. Okay? John 12, 24. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful of plentiful harvest of new lives. We cannot expect a harvest if we are not willing to plant the seed. It's just not, 
it's, it's logical, right? <laughs> we can't have the seed stored up. Now, the, thing, the first thing we need to point out is that a planting of a seed requires effort. A farmer doesn't buy the seed and then tells the seed, go plant yourself. Andale. <laughs> he doesn't do that. What does he have to do? He's got to get up early in the morning or whatever he does. He has to go out into the field, work the, work the ground, plant the seed. It takes effort. It takes work. It works the same way in our lives. We might not want to give those seeds of forgiveness. <laughs> But oh, how we need to. It costs us. There's a lot of effort put on that. We might not want to give that seed of love to that person that you think doesn't deserve it. It takes effort. We might be struggling financially and we have second thoughts about giving our, that offering. But we know that we need to plant the seed. At the end of the day, our planting does not depend on our feelings. It depends on our faith. Are we planted in faith? It takes effort, yes. But our faith takes us there. Because faith without action is dead. And we need, to, we need to put that effort, that extra effort. Oh, this guy. <laughs> Or this girl, right? I don't think I can forgive him. I don't think I can love him. I don't think I can care. I... And we need to have that faith on our side and plant in faith. And our efforts are going to be worth the while because we know that we know that we will see the harvest of that seed that we planted maybe in tears. Psalms 126.5 says, those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. Maybe you've been planting seeds of prayer and prayer and prayer for that son, for that husband, for that wife, for that cousin, that uncle. You will shout with joy when you see the harvest. Now, planting seeds can sometimes be discouraging. It can sometimes be risky. <laughs> Me and my wife, we've all, we love plants. We love flowers and stuff like that, but we're not good at it. <laughs> my mom, she has that hand. In, 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 in Mexico, we, we call it tiene mano. Because she, she can get, I mean, she can get a stick from a tree that it's almost dying, she'll get it, she'll plant it, and whoosh. And I thought I had taken that from her, and no, I didn't. We plant flowers and stuff, and we, you know, and we do water them and everything, but they just die on us. It's risky. It's discouraging sometimes. And mostly, you know, when, when the farmer goes and plants his seed, you know what happens? He doesn't know what's going on underneath the ground. And he can't go and dig the dirt and see, okay, let me see if it's giving roots. Let me see if it's going to sprout. He can't do that because the plant will die. He needs to leave it there and wait. He needs to, he needs to wait. And he doesn't know if it's growing. Is it taking roots? Is it going to sprout? And we sometimes plant seeds. We plant seeds of love, compassion, patience, forgiveness, understanding, prayer. And we don't see those immediate results. Why? If I, if, if I treat her well, why does she treat me like that? Why, if I already forgave, they keep on treating me bad? 
Why if I put so much effort into this, this other thing keeps on happening? We don't see what's going on underneath the ground. That belongs to the Lord. Man, is this going to sprout? Is it going to give fruit? Will my husband ever change? Will my son come back to Christ? Will I find that job? Will I get that raise? Will my parents get back together? So many seeds that we long to see grow and bear fruit. But the key again is faith. To have that daring faith. It takes a farmer faith to plant a seed. Because he really doesn't know what the outcome of the harvest is going to be. He doesn't know if it's going to be a small harvest or it's going to be a big harvest. Or maybe he doesn't get any harvest at all. But he has faith. When he plants that seed, he plants it in faith. He says, I will get a, a, a crop from this. I will get a harvest from this. And the same thing applies to us. We must keep on planting. They reject you, keep on planting. They criticize you, keep, keep on planting. Oh, the finances aren't going that well. My wallet is is almost empty. Keep on planting. I don't see that health breakthrough. Keep on planting. God will see you through. God will see you through. The third law, whatever you plant you will reap whatever you sow you will reap a farmer he plants what he knows he's gonna get he doesn't plant corn and say ah apples better not come out of this thing (laughs) no he doesn't say that because he know that corn's gonna come out right So what you sow is what you will reap. Galatians 6, 7 says, you will always harvest what you plant. You will always harvest what you plant. In life, the same law applies. And we can expect it to work both ways. Either for us or against us. What you sow, you will reap. What you sow, you will reap. Whatever you decide to dish out is what you will get back in life. And the Bible actually talks about this quite a bit. And let me show you some verses uh, of, of, that have to do with this uh, sowing and this reaping. And we're going to see some negative aspects to it first. In Job 4.8 says, people who plant trouble... Harvest it. You plant trouble, you get trouble. Proverbs 28, 8, 22, 8, I'm sorry, says those who plant seeds of injustice will harvest disaster. Matthew 7, 2, whatever measure you use to judge others will be used to measure how you are judged. Okay, enough of the negative. Let's see some positive ones, please. Thank you. Proverbs eleven eighteen, the one who sows righteousness will reap a sure reward. Hosea ten twelve says, plant good seeds of righteousness and you'll harvest a crop of my love. Wow. I like that one. James three eighteen, peacemakers plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of goodness. I think we get the idea, right? We cannot expect to reap success, success, I'm sorry, if we are sowing irresponsibility. We cannot expect to reap love if we're sowing hate. We cannot expect to reap a great blessing if we sow stinginess. 
And if you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> it's okay. We can't. What we reap, I mean, sorry, what we sow, that is what we will reap. And if we give freely, if we give generously, with, with, with generosity in our hearts, we will be blessed beyond measure in whatever area of our lives we are planting. Now, I like it. I like how Galatians 6, 7, and 8 is translated in the message translation. We're going to see that real quick. And it says, the person who plants self selfishness, ignoring the needs of others and ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. That's all he'll have to show for his life. What farmer wants to have a crop of weeds? No. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him, harvest a crop of real life, eternal life. And I like this. I love this. When we as individuals and when we as a church respond to God, to a calling God is giving, this is a time where this church is at a pivotal moment. We are on the verge of seeing great growth, of seeing great blessing upon this church, upon the community, and upon the, 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 where, where we are a blessing in Zambia, in Mexico. But you know what? It's going to take daring faith. It's going to take you and me planting our seeds, responding to that call that God is giving us as a church. And it says that when we do, and that we do it in faith, God's Spirit does the growth in us. And it gives us a crop of real life of eternal life. I love it that it says real life and then it says eternal life. What does this mean? That maybe the life that you're living right now, maybe your present situation right now, you're like, <laughs> this isn't life. This isn't life. But what God wants you to do is that out of that calling that he's giving to you, maybe he's telling you love your husband more. Maybe he's telling you, pay more attention to those kids. Maybe he's telling you, invest time in, in the work of God. So many things that God can be calling us to do. And in those areas, we see that it's on the verge of death, that it's maybe dying, that it's maybe decreasing. You know what? God is telling you, do it. And I will, I will give life. I will give, give real life to that situation. Respond to God's calling. And as a church, we need to respond to this calling that God is telling us, believe me. Believe me for great things. Believe me for greater things. And God will give real life. What you sow, that's what you will reap. And we see different stories in the Bible that Talk, talk about this. Jacob <laughs> was a cheater, pumpkin eater. <laughs> he cheated his brother. He cheated his father. And then what happened to him? He got cheated, right, by his father-in-law. Haman had a big pole set up for Mordecai to be stuck on. And it was used for him. Now, Joseph waited patiently through trial and trouble and became the prince of Egypt. David, he worshiped secretly and was honored publicly. What you sow, you will reap. 
what you sow is what you will reap. Now, the last law. The last law. And there are things that you say, well, duh. But when you think about it, it's like, oh, oh. Because look at this last one. Here you go. You ready? You will always reap more than what you sow. You will always reap more than what you sow. One little seed can give hundreds, thousands. When, when we pass through uh, those pecan trees out to the east, going to El Paso, you think it was just one seed for one tree that gives a lot of pecans for years and years and years and years. You will always reap more than what you sow. Mark 4, 8 says, Some seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, and 100 times. 30, 60, and 100 times. What you plant can come back to you 100 times fold. It can. What you plant. Now, there is a catch to this. <laughs> Can you put that verse up again? Read that first line. Some seed fell on what? Good soil. You need good soil. You need good soil. The way you and I will be able to produce a great harvest in those areas of our lives that we need it, the way we're going to be able to do it is that the soil that we're planting in needs to be good. Where you plant determines greatly the quality and the quantity of crops you are going to get. You can ask a farmer and they'll tell you, right? The ground is of great, very important. It's very important. So your family, your family is good soil. When you plant in your kids, when you plant in your spouse, you are planting in good soil. It might not look at, like it right now. Just saying. But it's good soil. And it's going to reproduce abundantly when I was a kid I probably wasn't even worth I mean that's what I thought of myself a cent and but my parents my my dad and my mom always encouraged me always would would plant these seeds of love and of the word of God and they would they would Put this upon me. And I grew up to be the only one in my family to be in ministry. You do not know what your words, what your actions are doing to that ground. And out of that, you will have great fruit in your family. So your family is good soil. Your career could be a good soil. But you know what, church? Your church is good soil. This church is good soil. I'm sure you have seen the great fruit and great blessing this church has been, not only to our community, not only to Las Cruces, because it has been a blessing to Las Cruces, but around the world. Man, that, that feeling you have when, when you see that kid on the street and, and, and just that smile that comes on his face 
when you just take the time to be with them. If you haven't gone on a mission trip, you need to go on a mission trip. And it's not a commercial. But the next time that there's a mission trip, sign up. Ay, mijo, I can't go. No, 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 no. You can go. We had, we had two ladies well over their 60 uh, years of age. And man, they, we couldn't stop them. When, when one, one of them would tell us, I'm very sick and I just don't want to hold you guys back. And Are you sure you want me to go? I'm like, yes, you can go. Are you sure? Because I don't want to be stopping you guys. And we couldn't stop her. We would go out find, looking for her. Where is she? And she'd be praying for people. And You can come. Those are seeds that you are planting that are just incredible. I mean, this church, you do not know the blessing this church is till you experience, till you experience this. But around the world, the Philippines, Mexico, Africa, Central America, they've all been blessed by the powerful seeds you have so gener generously planted. It's your seed. This church is good soil. This church is good ground. When you plant your time, when you plant your efforts, when you plant your service to this church, when you plant your offering seed, you not only cause a great harvest locally, you create great opportunities for people around the world to hear the gospel of Jesus and to be blessed. And locally, woo, wow, we're getting to that point where kids don't fit. We're getting to the point where we, we need to expand, like the pastor was telling us a while ago. Can you believe that? Our kids and our youth this past year doubled in number. Doubled in number. And it's going to take us as, as a whole, as a church, to go forth and bring our offerings, bring our seed for that to happen over there. As Jason was saying, there's going to be... Uh, oh, my Lord. What is the word? Maps, those things down back there that, that are gonna that are gonna give you a vision of what the church wants to do. So you can embrace it, so you can be part of it. This church is a planting church. It plants seeds that bear much fruit. And we're gonna see a video really quick of of what you guys do around the world. is possible because of you church so the seeds you plant will you bow your heads with me please as we close you know the most important seed that will further produce great fruit 
is your own life. Your own life. Planted in the best soil there can be. Our lives planted in the Lord Jesus will not only produce for us an abundant life here on earth, but an eternal life. The only way we can give the, these kinds of seeds of love, of forgiveness, of patience, goodness, generosity, is by planting our own life in the one that can provide this kind of seed for us. You know, maybe you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ. Or maybe you're here and, and um, you've, you've strayed away and you want to recomm recommit your life to Jesus. You know, your life itself is a seed. It's a seed that can bring forth a, a harvest that you can't even imagine. A harvest of love, a harvest of salvation, a harvest of healing. Of harvest, a harvest of great work. Your life can do that. 